Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. All, hello to all of you folks out in Brownsville, Tennessee on 1520 AM and 95.3 FM. And, of course, in Jackson, Tennessee on News Talk 101.5. And right here in the Memphis area on ESPN AM 790. Uh, always good to talk to this next guest, and I know that uh, John Gordon and uh, Ron Wong will sit back and listen, and then, uh, since we will be talking a little waterfowl here, uh, John, jump in if you want to. Uh, I'm sure you uh, you and Terry Denman know each other. Who doesn't know Terry when it comes to waterfowl? Or maybe you got a lot of friends in Louisiana. Terry has done so much uh, good work, uh, not only through the uh, – the Wildlife Commission down there, being the chairman of the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, but also uh, being the host of the Mojo TV show and travels and all these different kind of things. So it's always good once duck season is ended, which it never ends for John Gordon because he gets paid uh, for following ducks. You do, you do get paid, don't you, John? And you're not doing this free. They, they pay me. They do pay you. Know, you. I, I do it for free, but they pay me. Yeah, well, I'm. This next guy, I guess so. Terry, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Let's talk uh, on outdoors, with Larry Ray, and I, I know you, you've been on us many many times, and our 20 years almost on the air up here, and you guys are always coming out with things, and you know it, it doesn't seem possible, Terry, to think back when all this uh, mojo or or which means magic, if I don't if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in the voodoo language, so to speak, it seems like it, it 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 was just the other day, back in the late 1990s, when uh, you and Murray Crow and Jeff Simmons and all you guys, the Spending Week decoy, took off, or the SWD, as we might call it, and you guys have been the forefront of, of that ever since, and since particularly since uh, you took over the company in 2012, so... Talk about the evolution of the spinning weed decoy, because you guys have now come up with a little bit something uh, added to the decoy. Well, the the concept of the spinning weed decoy, as we all know, came out of California. I am told in about 97, 98, uh, it got down to our part of the world. I'm in Louisiana, you in West Tennessee, Stuttgart, got all down this area. Uh, in 99, okay. and, but it was being made at that time by some rice farmers in the Valley of California, making them in their farm shop, and they couldn't meet demand, and so uh, a lot of people started making them because that's the only access they had to them was to make one or have someone make them for them, and as you know, you know, our friend Jeff Simmons owns a huge sporting goods store right. in Bastrop, yes. Louisiana, I asked our common friend Murray Crow to make him some, and that's what brought us to the dance, and uh, what really uh, uh, got us uh, up and going was that Murray invented uh, what's today known as the, the uh, direct drive spinning wing decoy. Yes. Uh, now, most people that are duck hunting today, unless they're old as me and you, oh, probably come don't, on. <laughs> don't recognize that term because they've never seen a decoy made uh, any other way. And uh, the original ones had little high-speed motors and yep. pulleys and belts and stuff, and it would call ducks as long as it would run, yeah. but it didn't always run, and it was noisy and blah, blah, blah. So when, when Murray hooked the wings directly to a bigger motor, then, you know, basically we revel, we, we built a better mousetrap, if you would. We didn't. Murray did. And, um, uh, and so that's what got us going. And then, you know, as you say, with our brand name, Mojo, it just turned out to be pretty catchy. So... You know, you add a good brand to a good product, and it's pretty easy thereafter. But the first, to answer your question about the evolution of them, all those first ones, all anyone could do was just get a decoy, get a hollow body decoy some way, cut a hole with it, you know, be able to get mount a motor in the side of it and, and hook some wings to it. And, yes. uh, <laughs> and, and actually, that concept existed for... Uh, well over 10 years, but it wasn't the correct way to build one. Uh, you know, you got the motor hooked to the body, and you got the body hooked to the support. You know, yes. and that's yep. just think of your car, your truck, your motorcycle, anything. If you if you hook the motor of your car uh, to the body, you know, what would you have? <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to drive it. I can no. tell you that. No. So no. I had this concept for years that you know we ought to build it in a better way. 
and uh, and so finally we did. We built uh, what you what you referred to a, a minute ago, and we call the Elite Series. Yes, and, yeah. And we we made a housing, just a housing, and put the motor and the battery and everything inside that housing. And then we just wrapped a flexible body around it. It's, it, it's only purpose is to make it look like a, a duck or whatever other bird you want to make it look like. So it's uh, it made a better mousetrap. And, John Gordon, you're listening on this. Is, uh, is your lifeline is a waterfowl hunter and things along that line. you remember your first time you saw a spinning wing decoy, John? I do very well, Larry, and it, it, like like Terry said, it was right there along that late '90s time frame, you know. And I was I was in Texas at that point, and um, <laughs> you know we were just astounded, yes, as, as to what it would do. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you're talking about being able to to attract ducks that normally you know wouldn't even give you a second look, and and they were all of a sudden uh, decoying by the hundreds. Uh, it was really a revolution, and it it still works great today. And and I know, uh, Terry, when we talk about this, uh, it may seem like a long time ago to you, but you you've you've crammed so much in, into your life as a and not only as a businessman but a conservationist and things along this line. And and your show has been so successful uh, on the outdoor uh, the, the outdoor TV. I mean, I, I, how many years now has Mojo out Mo, Mojo TV been on? Well, I think that this is our 12th year. Wow. We wow. were on the air before that, but it was a show that we had before Mojo TV yes. with Mike Morgan and Jim Jones. You remember that? Oh, it's yeah. Called Hunting yeah. Across America. Yes, yes. But this has been about 12 years on the TV show. And it's not an easy thing to do a TV show. Right, John Gordon? <laughs> That's very right, Larry. I should know. Uh, more than anyone in in the in the really the challenge of waterfowl hunting tv show for sure is the fact that those jokers can get up and fly <laughs> away yeah you yeah. know so it, it just it, it's really difficult to film and but it, it it's really rewarding when you catch it right and i know terry talk talk about what's going on at mojo now because you guys uh started out rather small if you want to get to it and now you're into turkey hunting you're uh uh, you know, I see all these different things. You got the new um, scoot and shoot Max that I hope to be in the field with myself. So, talk about the evolution of Mojo Outdoors. Then, well, it uh, it started with that one product yes. in 1999, uh-huh. and uh, uh, and first we just started expanding to other duck products, mostly spinning wing, but other motion devices, uh, and then we branched out. Uh, only a year or two later, we came out with the Mojo Dove, which happens to be our the most popular product that we make today. Is the Mojo uh, Dove. Okay. Yeah. Then we got into uh, making some predator uh, hunting uh, decoys because I was a predator caller. Yes. Uh, and then we just naturally moved over into the uh, turkey field. And our first uh, stab in the turkey field was we made uh, a, a product called a Shake and Jake. Our, our buddy, we all know Preston Pittman, he had to yes. do that. Yes. But that was another Murray Crow invention. You know, it would turn the body, <laughs> fan the tail. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Great product, but it just it wasn't very portable, and uh, and we sold a lot of them, but it really wasn't uh, as popular as it needed to be. And then we kind of got into this uh, what some people call fanning uh, turkeys. That's our scoot and shoot decoy. Yes. And yeah. uh, by the way, we we don't claim to have started fanning. Some people kind of jump on us about that, but we've never claimed to do that. No, nope. I, I, I know Mike Morgan told me he did it 30 years ago in Florida. Rob Keck told me he did it 30 years ago in Florida. And I have read that the Native Americans did it 100 years ago, 200 years ago. But it's a very exciting way to hunt turkeys, and we just happened to get into that uh, that little niche of it and uh, develop this um, scoot and shoot. I think that scoot and shoot's been on the market about six years now and we've made two or three enhancements to it uh each year and then uh, uh there 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 are a number of decoys out there turkey decoys uh, uh gobbler decoys that allow you to swap the uh the artificial fan that comes with it for a real fan right yeah and we did that several years ago but then we kind of got into making some further improvements to it and so we modified that for this year where you can just pop the wings, the artificial wings that come with it off, 
and pop real wings in the place of it with a separate hub, yeah. somewhat similar to how you put the uh, put the uh, tail fan on it with, you know. So it just makes for a more realistic looking decoy. And, and you can use it also as a, as a steel hunter, or you can take it with you, whatever it might be. Uh, you need to go, and, and I'm I'm always amazed when I go that, that website. What's that website again, Terry? MojoOutdoors.com. It's real simple, and, and click on the new products and things that they have in that. And and I know before we let you go, uh, th- does this kind of blow your mind, Terry? I, I mean, when, when this all started, I know you've uh, you've put a lot into, as I say, in conservation. You got your caring for kids. I remember you talking about that. Uh, I was up there when you went into the Legend of the Outdoors Hall of Fame uh, back in 2014, and uh, Golly, the things you've done. Uh, what, did, what did Terry uh, Denman want to do as a kid growing up? You know, I don't know. I grew up on a hand labor farm, and I was most of the hand labor, so <laughs> I knew for sure I wanted to get off that farm. And, and, and that's what got me to go into engineering school and became an engineer. But I always, wanted, I always loved to hunt. I probably started hunting, believe it or not, on my own probably when I was six years old. Wow. You know, I'd have a... You know, a BB gun, or then they let me take a single shot twenty two off, and then, you know, found there I you got go. a double barrel twenty gauge. But I always wanted to hunt, and well, so the engineering business gave me the, the, the resources to go on hunts that I couldn't go on. And of course, you uh, growing up in the Monroe area, there. Uh, did you go to school with the uh, with the uh, Terry Bradshaw, at Louisiana Tech, was he there when you were there? Or, uh... I think he. I think I was graduating about the time he came along. I hate to admit that I'm older than Terry Bradshaw because no, he man. lost all his hair and he looks so old. No, you know? no, 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 no. You look fine. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> want a picture of you instead of Terry Bradshaw, but because um, I know who the quarterback was before Terry Bradshaw, we sure we can't run his picture. Okay, <laughs> that's <think>. correct. <laughs> yeah, he's got too much hair on his face. If anybody can kind of guess who that is and everything. Hey, Terry, thank you for being on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Uh, always love to talk to you, buddy. I appreciate your support, uh, Mojo Outdoors, over the years with this radio show. Uh, couldn't do it without you guys. Anytime I've ever needed anything, all I had to do was call Terry, one of the guys down there. Hope you have a great weekend, and we will stay in touch. Okay, man? All right, man. Glad to do it. Good to talk to you guys. All right. Thank you. All right, Terry Denman. And and I know, uh, uh, John, I mean... The, you could do a whole show with Terry. Uh, oh yeah, it'd be real easy. He's he has seen it and done it. This you know, made, he's uh, made seven there's... trips to Africa. Okay, seven trips to Africa. Hear that? I mean, you know, I, and, I know it. And and grown up in all these different kind of things. A, a, a engineering degree from Louisiana Tech. Uh, oh man, he's just a super cool guy. Is it time, Shelby? She's shaking her head. Okay. Um, I think that means it's time. All right, let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray. John, I know you enjoyed that. Sit back. We're going to talk some fishing for a little while, John. You like to fish, too. I know. So uh, let's get ready for it. We're going to come back and uh, talk to a champion. I always love to talk to champions on Outdoors with Larry Ray. We'll be right back. 